Thanks, Annie. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I nearly said good morning. I think I'm still in a different time zone. Um, apologies. I'm, uh, I'm Mike Leake. I'm chief executive of TC Biofarm, and our lead product is called Immunicell. It's a novel anti-cancer immunotherapy, uh, yet another immunotherapy. Uh, this one has potential to treat all different tumor types, uh, both uh, blood-borne tumors and soft tissue tumors. The core technology is licensed actually from Medinet in Japan. Um, great, great group. They've done a lot of work on this, this uh, technology, treated many, many patients in Japan and given us some very useful clinical data. And it's all around the delivery of autologous gamma delta T cells into the patient. The therapy uh, is, is intriguing in as much as it complements the immune checkpoint inhibitors, the uh, antibodies such as uh, CTLA-4, PD-1, in as much as, as those products, those antibodies, open up the tumor to the immune system, what we can do is then boost the immune system. So potentially, two and two will make a wee bit more than four. And some of our clinical investigators, uh, Cancer Research UK physicians in Edinburgh and Glasgow, are very, very keen to do some special studies, uh, physician-driven studies, where they actually look at this uh, combination of the two, uh, the two product approaches. And today we've raised a, a relatively modest amount of money, approximately 5.5 million pounds, uh, dollars, I wish it was pounds, uh, it's not pounds, it's dollars, uh, over the last, last 12 months. This is a, a, a schematic, a picture of what Immunocell looks, like, looks like. It starts off with a, a fairly low, a kind of standard percentage of gamma delta T cells. Uh, typically, most of us have between 1 and 5%. So in this particular graphic, you can see um, that the patient starts off with a, a approximately 4% gamma delta T cells, and we expand these up in culture over a 14-day period. And so by the time we finished uh, incubating these cells, we're up between 90 and 98% gamma delta T cells. Typically, we can get a dose of 5 times 10 to the 9 uh, per cycle of, of cells. So we're looking at pretty big, pretty big uh, doses, 5 billion plus cells. We're a very young company. We're only actually 20 months old. Uh, the company was pretty much founded the, the, the beginning of 2014 with our first fundraising in February, which was um, supported by Medinet. Medinet made an investment. A uh, Scottish investment bank made an, an investment. And we commenced operations at that point and decided that we would build our own facility, our own manufacturing facility. So by May, we'd identified the premises and actually started um, the build. And by July, amazingly, uh, took uh, less than 12 weeks, the facility build was completed. Now, you might think that it was a, a sort of a, a pretty awful shed. My clock's not going down, by the way, so this is great because it means I have lots and lots and lots of time. So I'm sitting, uh, it's all of a sudden it's gone from 14 minutes to 12. Um, that's not fair, guys. Um, so we, we, we built this amazing facility, which actually is fairly robust considering the amount of time that we took. Um, and by October... We invited the MHRA, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regu um, Regulatory Agency, to come and inspect it, which was uh, one of those times when you start biting your fingers when they, they audit you for the first time. Uh, we passed with flying colors and were granted a MHRA, um, MIA, IMP, Investigational Medicinal Product, license in December of last year. Winding forward to June of this year, we made our first clinical trial uh, submission, which was uh, an IMPD, an investigational medicinal product dossier, investigational bro investigator brochure and protocol. And the MHRA again turned it around very quickly, uh, came back with some questions on uh, the, uh, some of the validation work that we were doing, very happy with the protocol. And so by August, we were actually granted a CTA. So we had all of the regulatory clearances because we got ethics permission as well to start treating patients in a phase two, three clinical study. Moving to the present day, we're now ready to start treating patients and we're about to start our first clinical stu study, which will be a phase two, three uh, study looking at patients with non-small cell lung cancer, renal cell carcinoma and melanoma. A couple of pictures. I I really liked it in May 2014 because at that point we'd raised a bit of cash and I was just thinking about spending the next few months either driving round in a cart between the pillars 
which probably would have killed me. Or, or we did actually have a couple of five-a-side football games um, with some of the other people around the place. Unfortunately, a month later, all the bits started turning up, all the walls, and uh, that kind of screwed up my ideas of, of cart- spending the rest of my life carting around this uh, wonderful piece of empty space. By July, it was starting to look like a clean room. Uh, the pass-through hatches had started to appear, and the uh, liner had put, been put down with different colours for... Uh, different parts of the clean room. I thought that was a really cool idea to actually identify um, grade C to B by having different colours in the carpet, on on the floor, because it made me aware of what I should be wearing and what I should be uh, gowning up. So by August, uh, a very short period later, from May, we actually were up and running doing the technology transfer from the guys in Japan growing Gamma Delta T cells. Although I have to tell you that that picture there with with Fiona in the clean room, uh, it was... It was on the day of our opening, and we didn't want to waste any media on um, people who were coming around for the opening. So actually, those bags are filled with iron brew, would you believe? Um, And we don't know whether you can grow cells in iron brew or not, but uh, it looked pretty good. You don't have iron brew over here, do you? No, it's brewed in Scotland. Um, So moving on to where we are now. This is where we are today. We're just on the cusp of starting our first clinical trial. As I said before, it's um, a phase two adaptive clinical, phase two, phase three, actually, adaptive clinical study. And what you see here is one study. It's not a phase two, three with a break in between. It's a single adaptive study that the MHRA have approved that has three iterative cycles. The first cycle, potentially in between nine and um, 12 patients, is dose optimization. What we want to do is take leukophoresis product and just see how many gamma delta T cells we can get out of the patients. Uh, Escalate the dose, starting at around about two times 10 to the nine, getting up to um, anything between 10 and 15 times 10 to the nine. And so it's a combination of um, understanding what's achievable, dose maximization, and also looking out for uh, potential adverse events such as a cytokine storm, because no one's used such large numbers of gamma delta T cells before. So this first cycle will have a primary endpoint of safety, but the, um, the other endpoints will be for us to decide what we're going to really um, put a stake in the ground as our dose, the range, the range of cells that we're going to give to the patient. We're kind of thinking we're going to be at the, 10 times, at the 5 times 10 to the 9 up to 10 times 10 to the 9 as our typical dose. But that will come out of that first iteration of uh, patients. At that point, once we've decided what the dose range is going to be, we'll then move on to stage two, where we're able to look at three different indications, as I mentioned before, non-small cell lung cancer, renal cell carcinoma, and melanoma. And because we've established the, uh, the optimum dose, at this point, we're looking for a signal. The endpoint will be evidence of a signal, which if we see a signal in one, we'll be um, overjoyed, and we expect to. If we see a signal in three, we're going to have to raise a shed load more money because we can't treat all three patients in the, in, the, in the third stage. And in the third stage, which could be one of those three indications, we um, expect to be treating minimally 120 patients, and the endpoint will be um, evidence of um, stable disease complete or partial response over a 6 to 12 month period using immune-related response criteria. And um, we derived that number by um, working with statisticians who had looked at a number of meta-analysis and data that emerged from Japan, from Medinet, which showed us amazingly that if you take that data from all of these patients, then 40% of individuals treated with gamma delta T cells actually show Um, stable disease, partial or complete response. And that's how we got to the 120 number. It probably will end up being more. So as I said, we're um, now moving forward into the clinical stage. It's an exciting new area for TC Biofarm, uh, only 20 months after we were founded. And we already have trial sites established in Glasgow, Edinburgh, Southampton, Oxford and Newcastle. All of these sites are Cancer Research UK centres of excellence. And we're provisionally looking at a whole load of other places in the UK, uh, some of them more glamorous than than others, and uh, also looking to move into Europe. And we've identified a a site in Amsterdam who are very keen to work with us. And also next week, I'm out in in New York talking to some people at Memorial Sloan Kettering to to, uh, discuss the, the possibility of them joining the trial and San Antonio as well. 
We also have aspirations potentially to move the trial across to Japan and uh, are very excited about the information we're getting from the Japanese regulators that we heard this morning from the PMDA. So it could actually very quickly turn into a clinical trial with a, a European, a, U, a U, US and a, 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 Jap, a Japanese element to it. Patients typically in the clinical trial are going to be late stage poor responders. However, uh, again, under a specials license, a couple of our Cancer Research UK um, clinicians want to, particularly in lung, look at patients earlier and try and move from um, tertiary treatment up to primary using gamma delta T cells, which is, is, is quite exciting. And something we're doing that is a great way, I think, of stratifying the patients. So you're really increasing your chance of efficacy is we're going to take every patient and run a small scale um, process on that patient where we, instead of taking leukophoresis product, we just take a wee amount of blood, maybe an arm or a legs full, um, and we'll use that to, to predict how their gamma delta T cells will A, proliferate, and then also predict their potency using uh, a small scale uh, expansion process that we've developed in-house. And that makes this autologous cell therapy truly personalized, and it, it um, embodies a lot of the concepts of, of uh, precision medicine that, that we're very keen on building um, in, in Scotland. The starting material, as I've mentioned a couple of times, is derived from leukophoresis product. And that, that gives us a real advantage because we've got a really high quality reproducible starting material, whereas previously many studies using gamma delta T cells have focused on starting material from blood. We're all about trying to get as big a dose as possible into the patient as, as we can. So the PBMC is the preferable blood mononuclear cells. I won't be able to say that after two or three beers later on. Um, will be isolated and frozen into six intermediate cell aliquots, which are effectively our drug substance. We then take these ICAs, thaw them, and expand them in culture using the proprietary techniques that we've licensed from Medinet in Japan over a 14-day period to make the drug product. And then the patient will receive up to six intravenous infusions of gamma delta T cells of immunicell over a three-month period. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the patients will be monitored using immunorelated response criteria for evidence of disease control. Um, stable disease, um, partial and complete responses. I haven't mentioned the release criteria. The release criteria are all based on um, facts mostly. Of course, you've got your sterility, mycoplasma, all that kind of stuff that we do in-house as, as standard tests for safety. But we release on um, facts analysis, which is um, cells that are CD3 positive, CD45 positive, and um, V gamma 9 positive. So I guess that's me with just about, now they've changed the clock. I want that time back. Um, three, two minutes to go and uh, really nothing more to say apart from the fact that I'm hoping to come back in a year's time, talk to you a wee bit more about some of the data we've um, uh, amassed and maybe a little bit about the efficacy of uh, human autologous gamma delta T cells. So thanks for your time.